Hey folks, I'm Rupali your host and welcome back to Crime Hack. So far, Akash was beaten up, Raj and Sandy were ambushed, Priya was kidnapped, Sandy was attacked and held captive. Then Priya was released. Sandy managed to escape and followed the suspect Tushar to the Katraj Lake and then the Katakombis tunnels. Later, while brainstorming about Tushar's reasons to go into the tunnels, the boys realized that these tunnels were the holes that their attackers were referring to when Sandy overheard them saying, "We need to hurry up on the holes to get to our sweet reward." As such, the Katakombis tunnels gain importance. However, the boys can't find out what the sweet reward could be. Raj and Sandy split up the work of investigating all these leads. Raj finds out that the people they saw mounting cameras in the city had lied and so they must be involved in some criminal activity. He also discerns that Priya was kidnapped and kept in the same creepy old mansion in her locality where Sandy was attacked and kept. His work thus complete, he heads towards the rendezvous point. On the other hand, Sandy was tasked with investigating the catacombish tunnels, but as soon as he starts, he is ambushed again. And now, Nayak Brothers and the Mystery of the Catacombish Tunnels by Rupali Rajapathe Roti, Part 36. Four men jumped over the wall after Sandy and threw chili powder at his face. Not again. Sandy barely managed to close his eyes in time and staggered backwards, only to bump into the first assailant. There was no time to lose and he ran for it, away from them all, shaking and wiping his face to be ready to fight. He hadn't gone far though when he bumped into a tree and whirled around to face his attackers. But it was too late already. Punches landed on his jaw and stomach and he was down with a hard kick at his chest even before he could open his eyes. He rebounded off the tree and fell to the ground with a grunt, unconscious. Ha! So much for a fighter. One of the assailants smirked. Can't even take a single kick. Lying there unconscious like a girl. Another spoke up. Boss, what do we do with him now? The first one spoke again. What else? I had told them to keep their large noses out of our business. But these brainless kids can't understand what's good for them. If I kill him right now and bury his body right here, nobody will be able to find him. Ever. A third person croaked. Boss, what is it, Dushar? The boss roared with anger and Tushar stuttered. Could we hold him captive to lure his brother to us? We may as well kill him before calling his brother, was the instant retort. But his brother would come for the corpse as well, wouldn't he? Sandy gulped. He had never been unconscious but was acting that way for two reasons. First. With the chili powder still in his face, he had little chance of fighting the five men and would have gotten a lot more beaten than he was already. And second, pretending to be unconscious, he had a better chance at finding out more than what he would if he was conscious. I better be ready, Sandy thought while focusing his complete energy on his senses. The blow could come anytime and from anywhere. His only defense was the surprise element. But to his relief, the boss seemed to take Tushar's advice. Maybe we should do as you say. We could kill them together. (laughs) Then both will have the opportunity to see the other die. This somehow amused the boss and he let out a loud evil laugh. Tushar readily offered. I will him up then. Oh man, what do I do now? Sandy tensed. If I let them tie me up, my freedom goes out the window and I'll be more helpless to save myself. But if I resist, I probably won't get another chance at life. Either way, I'm dead. He had to make a decision fast and he decided to buy some time. Soon, 
Sandy's hands were pulled together to be tied behind his back. The bonds seem a bit loose, Sandy thought astonished. His legs came next and soon enough a gag was put in his mouth as well. Empty his pockets. The boys gave an order. Sandy's pockets were turned out as Sandy prayed silently. God, please don't let them find the knife. Nothing here, boss. Just a wallet, came the reply. In the shopping mall earlier, Sandy had purchased and then hidden the pocket flashlight and the Swiss army knife in his sock under the jeans. On a second thought, he had also tucked away some money in a plastic pouch in the other sock. Luckily, the man emptying his pockets didn't frisk him and Sandy breathed a sigh of relief. The boss, as usual, was busy mocking Sandy. <laughs> no mobile this time, huh? He sneered. But then suddenly becoming irritated, he kicked Sandy on the side of his shoulder. Now where do I get your brother's number from? Huh? He shouted angrily. Even though it hurt, Sandy didn't make a sound, lest he blow his cover. Nonetheless, he enjoyed the boss's irritation. The gang now had no other alternative than to get the number out of Sandy. But now they would have to wait for him to come around and he could take his own sweet time playing unconscious. Meanwhile, he may as well get a chance to free himself. Anybody held on to his earlier sim? The boss asked around. Tushar replied in his usual nervous tone. I have it, boss, but it's in my trunk. Sandy's hopes were crushed to the ground, but the boss cut in. Where? In the cave? That isn't going to help. You will take more than two hours to fetch it. And with dust closing in fast, God knows how much more time you will take. A cave? Sandy was perplexed. Where in Pune could you find an untouched cave that could be used by thugs like these? He waited to listen more. The boss continued. Ah, forget it. We will extract the number out of him. Dream on, Sandy challenged silently. But what if he refuses to give the number? Tushar seemed bent on going away. He can't refuse. He's a tender flesh. Didn't you see how he blacked out with just one kick? <laughs> uh, but boss, what if he blacks out every now and then? Tushar was absolutely right <laughs> and Sandy stifled a smile. The boss became silent for a moment. All right, go fetch it then. In the meantime, we can cover some more ground. Right, boys? And even if he comes to, he won't be running away now, right? But their past experience was different. Sandy did free himself the last time he was held captive. The boss seemed to be thinking on the same lines as he said, On second thought, we would better have someone guard him. Sandy heard fingers snapping and he was hoisted into the air by two people. One grabbed his shoulder and the other his feet and he let his head loll as if it had no support. Soon he heard the splashing of water and immediately prepared himself to feel the cold water on his skin. If it had come as a surprise, his involuntary convulsion would have given him away. Luckily, the cold water of the Katraj lake washed away the traces of chili powder from his face and he breathed a sigh of relief. Before long, through his closed eyes, he could feel darkness engulfing him and he guessed that he was being carried into the underground tunnel. Presently, the men carrying him started to put him down when the boss's voice echoed. No, no, face down. Let him have the taste of some more of that dirty water. Hearing this, Sandy became tense. He remembered the last time he had been in this tunnel when he had waded in knee-deep water. And now if he was kept down, irrespective of whether face down or face up, he would surely drown, especially with his hands and feet tied. Tushar again came to his rescue. Uh, but boss, he will drown that way. And we don't want him dead so soon. 
do we? You do have a lot of objections now, don't you? The boss snapped back and Tushar became silent. Sandy was horrified when he was flipped over in the air. He opened his eyes, fearing the worst, but when he noticed how low the water level here actually was, he almost let out a sigh. Yet he couldn't survive if his face was directly dunked into the water. Tushar was holding him by his shoulders and luckily he positioned Sandy in a way so he wouldn't choke on water. Sandy finally breathed a sigh of relief and thanked God for his good luck. Now everyone started to go about their own business. Tushar left to fetch Sandy's old SIM card and the others started to go deeper in the tunnel when a voice echoed. Uh, boss, my head's still swimming. You mind if I stayed back to guard him? The boss grunted for a response. But don't go wild on him. At least not yet. Oh, come on boss, you know me. The man defended himself playfully. I wouldn't do such a thing. But the boss snapped back angrily. I know who started this problem, alright? You! He paused for the seriousness to sink in. You lost your focus. And that's when these kids started sniffing around. But boss, the man choked back the remaining protest as the boss suddenly snarled like a wild animal. Own your mess, he roared, because you are going to have to clean it up. With that, the boss stormed off from there and the gang followed him further inside the tunnel while the wild man was left alone with Sandy. Sandy heard the man whisper bitterly behind the departing man. Clean up, I feel, boss, and a chill ran through his spine. The next thing Sandy knew Three powerful kicks came in succession without warning and turned the side of his abdomen into a fireball. Namaskar friends, hope you are watching our other videos too that talk about crime, business, psychology, funny bits and motivational short stories. Please do subscribe and let us know what you think. You can also tell us what topics you want us to create videos on. We will definitely work on them. Keep sharing your love with us. Keep safe. Support us on Patreon. Connect with us if you are an expert and want to share your wisdom on our channel. See you soon in our next video. Namaskar.